Yeah. You've noted that there are thousands within the Walter Reed system who may be treated by a specialist who visits uh, here at the White House, but this neurologist had a meeting with the president's physician, with his doctor. You're refusing that. to say if he was here to evaluate the president or if he was consulting on the president's health, so what then was that meeting about? And I will say that Dr. O'Connor leads the medical unit. He's so literally, he he's literally, the, he leads the medical unit. No, because we will not confirm or or uh, speak to names that are you're providing to me. It is out of security reason, is out of protecting someone's privacy. We're just not going to do that. But they are. The reason that I mention that is because there are a thousand military members that do indeed use the use the White House medical unit. They do. Well, they get care from that. People. We're talking about the president know, of the United States. States. But it, Guys, I'm trying to answer the question so you can connect the dot that there are multiple neurologists that come, not neurologists, specialists that come through here uh, because there are a thousand, like more than a thousand medical, uh, medical military personnel here, uh, military personnel here. Well, you certainly could clear this all up just by saying what he was doing here and if it was connected to the president, yes or no? I, I am not going to confirm the, the a, a particular no, neurologist, anybody. It doesn't matter if they're a dermatologist or a neurologist. I'm just not going to do that. I shared with all of you that the president has met, has been with the neurologist three times as it relates to his physical, three times. So you know, I'm just not, I'm, guys, I'm just not going to do that out of security reasons, out of privacy. It is, it is not something that I'm going to do. A measure of privacy, we have to be able to give people from here. One other question. Uh, uh, and the hold president, on, the president's, on, guys, come on. The president's on. doctor, you say, has seen no reason to evaluate him for Parkinson's since his physical in February. Is that based on these verbal check-ins that you've been describing based on his public appearances? Can we say that one more time? You've said that the, the president's doctor has seen no reason to evaluate him or reevaluate him for Parkinson's since that physical in February. What is that based on? Is it these well, verbal check-ins? I, I never said that. That's what my has said. Well, what I have said is what, what I have said uh, is that he just had a physical just in February, uh, and the physical was very clear. Uh, it was a comprehensive physical. Uh, it, we gave out a report on that, uh, and uh, and you know as it relates to the check-ins, that is something that is common. The the president has a medical unit that is literally down the hall uh, that he's able to check in with when necessary. Do they normally do it while he's exercising? That is not uncommon. It is very different. It is very different uh, than any everyday American. They do not have that option. They do not have that access because he's president of the United States. Every other president has had that access and they are able to do that. So wait, just to be clear, yes yeah. or no, has he has his physician seen a reason to reevaluate him for Parkinson's since the February physical? No. The, the, the comprehensive report that you all have stands. There is, we, the president obviously will have another physical and we'll wait for that physical. President Biden repeatedly dodging questions about whether he would take a neurological test after his disastrous debate performance, despite growing fallout. Have you had the specific cognitive tests and have you had a neurologist, a specialist, do an examination? No, no one said I had to. No one said they said I'm good. Would you be willing to undergo an independent medical evaluation that included neurological and cognitive tests and release the results to the American people? Look, I have a cognitive test every single day. Every day I have that test. Dr. Mark Siegel raised concerns about the president's cognitive abilities back in 2020 right here on Fox, and he joins us this morning. Good morning, Dr. Siegel. Morning, Ainsley. Good, Good to morning. see you. Good to see you. So what if he did agree to a cognitive test or a neurological test with a professional, with a doctor? What would that look like? Well, the one that President Trump had when he was in office was called the Montreal Cognitive Assessment, where you are given a list of words, and then a few minutes later, you're asked to recall them. Then you're also asked to copy objects. Uh, it's an issue of making sure that you're oriented, that you have, are oriented to time, place, person. It tests thinking, learning, understanding, remembering, and most of all, paying attention and judgment. Now, those words might sound familiar. They're what a president needs most of all. Decision making, focusing in, attention, orientation. And the other issue is, and you know, we started pointing this out four years ago. I mean, the media is pointing it out now. With all due respect to George Stephanopoulos, I was talking about this with Sean Hannity four years ago, because that's when it looked like we were starting to see signs of what's called mild cognitive impairment. 
To the public now, it looks like it's progressed more. We don't know. I'm not his doctor. I haven't examined him. But there's issues clearly with spatial orientation, with severe memory lapses. And another thing that the media did, which didn't do him any favors, was call these gaffes. It's not a gaffe if, if you have an error that's related to something going on with your thinking, judgment, attention. These are really mm -hmm. important things, and the patient is always the last to know, Ainsley. Yeah, I, I know. You hate to speculate, but I've heard different people, sundowner syndrome, which is affiliated with dementia or Alzheimer's, where later at night you get confused when the sun goes down. And then you might be better the next morning, which could explain why he does better at rallies during the day, or Parkinson's or vascular uh, dementia, I've heard. If he has any of these, if this is your loved one after you watch that debate, wouldn't you definitely schedule a doctor's appointment? And if they do, would they schedule an MRI? would that information be public? First of all, I think an MRI is even more important than a cognitive test at this point. If you did a cognitive test, it would be very helpful if he didn't score well. But if he scored borderline, we wouldn't know what that means. An MRI would show something you just talked about. If you had insufficient blood flow to, to tiny pockets of your brain because you have atrial fibrillation, which is an irregular heartbeat, which he does have, by the way, that might show up. That might well show up. Some of the other things you talked about, and I won't speculate, but I want to point out that Alzheimer's, I don't think that's what this is because that usually has a lot of more, more behavioral issues than he's showing. And Parkinson's, you know, they talk a lot about somebody visiting him, but they specifically said on his last exam he didn't have it. Now, if Dr. O'Connor is going to put in writing he doesn't have Parkinson's, I would respect that. But he danced around what he might actually have, and I find that very disappointing. I think transparency is what you need in democracy, actually, and I think we need a lot more of it here. Yeah, we, we do wish him well. It's uh, been very sad to see him you know, go down so quickly over the last four years. Thank you so much, Dr. Siegel, for coming on. That's very important that we show him compassion and empathy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Ainsley. Okay, thank you. Tonight, Washington's in the middle of a hostage crisis after Joe Biden took the entire Democratic Party captive. This morning, he sent a ransom note, I mean a letter, with a list of demands telling the Democrats he's firmly committed to staying in this race, whether they like it or not. Stick with me and no one gets hurt. While Democrats are looking around saying... If we stick with you, we all get hurt. If they lose, they're going to lose with him, not with anybody else. It wouldn't be fair to the Democrats who have already voted, Joe says, as if the party cares about voter integrity. <laughs> like all hostage negotiations, you bring a family member in to talk the hostage taker down. This morning, Morning Joe tried to talk to the president into releasing the hostages and resigning. It didn't go well. I am not going anywhere. I wouldn't be running if I didn't absolutely believe that I am the best candidate to beat Donald Trump in 2024. I'm here for two reasons, pal. One, to rebuild the economy for hardworking middle class people, give everybody a shot. It's a straight shot. Everybody gets a fair chance, number one. Number two, remember all this talk about how I don't have the black support? Come on, give me a break. Come with me, watch, watch. I'm getting so frustrated by, by the elites. Now, I'm not talking about you guys, but about the elites in the party who they know so much more. But if any of these guys yeah. don't think I should run, run against me, go ahead, announce, to, announce the president. Challenge me at the convention. Biden's bunkered up with Hunter holding the party hostage, screaming at Morning Joe about the elites, the very people who put Joe in the White House and have been covering for him. Biden would still be a Delaware senator if it wasn't for the CIA, Obama donors, FBI, and the media who parachuted him into the presidency during COVID and hid his condition. Biden wanted to be Abe Lincoln so badly, he got himself into a civil war. Like a bunch of Arab spring breakers, Democrats are gnashing their teeth at the gates of the White House, demanding Joe come out with his hands up. It's more likely that he'll uh, lose by a landslide than win narrowly this race. And if the stakes are as large as he says, and I believe they are, then he really needs to consider what, his, what the right thing to do here is. I think he should step aside. I think it's become clear that he's not the best person to carry the Democratic message. The need for him to step aside is more urgent tonight than when I first called for it on Tuesday. And every right. day he delays, it makes it more difficult for a new person to come on board who can defeat Donald Trump. Mr. President, your legacy is set. We owe you the greatest debt of gratitude. 
the only thing that you can do now to cement that for all time and prevent utter catastrophe is to step down and let someone else do this. Biden's facing calls to step down from congressional leaders tied to the intelligence community. Top Democrats on intel, judiciary, and armed services are calling for Biden's head. The CIA made Biden, and they're about to break him. The president knows what a coup looks like, and he's left his fate up to the Lord Almighty. Look, I mean, if the Lord Almighty came out and said, Joe, get out of the race, I'll get out of the race, the Lord Almighty's not coming down. In politics, there's something more powerful than the Lord Almighty, and it's the almighty dollar. And just like he can't win without intel, he can't win without donors. Top Hollywood Biden donors have alligator arms. Suddenly they can't find their wallets. They feel deceived by Biden. Actor Rob Reiner says, quote, it's time to stop effing around. It's time for Joe Biden to step down. The Disney heiress, Abigail Disney, Netflix CEO, Reed Hastings, media mogul Barry Diller and others aren't gonna be held hostage by a president with a 37% approval rating. They're all vowing to pull all donations from Biden and from House and Senate Democrats until Joe's off the ticket. Joe's losing intel, the donors. So what about the media? Binder had a rough one. Hold on a second. There's no reason to get back and go back and forth and well, be in this aggressive way. We missed around here about how information's been shared with the press corps around here. What do you miss about? Oh, what do you miss about? Everything he just asked about. And, what do you, and then every time I come back and I answer the question and that you, you guys asked. correctly, didn't have to come back and clean I up never answered answer the question incorrectly. That is not true. I was asked about a medical exam. I was asked about a physical. That was in the line of question that I answered. And I said, no, he did not have a medical exam. And I still stand that by that. Matter of fact, the president still stands by that. He had a verbal check-in. That is something that the president has a couple times a week. A couple times a week. Don't buy for a second that the media is upset that they've been misled by Biden's condition. They've been in on the cover-up. They see what you and I do. They've never raised his age before. You've seen Biden hold his note cards at press conferences where he gets the questions ahead of time. We've seen that. CNN's top doctor, Sanjay Gupta, has been saying for years, Biden seems fit, no need to take a cognitive test. Suddenly, now he wants a test. I think that the question really being raised is, have we been looking at episodes, intermittent episodes, or is this reflective of some sort of deeper underlying condition? If he were my dad, frankly, I would want to get more testing done, cognitive testing and more detailed movement disorder testing as well. This morning, the media said, Mr. President, everything will be okay. Just come out, take a cognitive test. Once we get the results, we can all go home safely like nothing happened. Have you been tested for any age-related illnesses, pre-Parkinson's or anything like that that might explain sort of having a night like that where you couldn't finish sentences? <laughs> Look, I had a bad night, but the fact of the matter is, look at what I'm doing. I mean, let me put it this way. If there was something that was wrong that night, it's not like it comes and uh, that's one night and it goes away. That's why I've been out. I've been testing myself, I've been testing everywhere I go, okay. going out and making the case. The night of that debate, I went out. I was out till two o'clock in the morning that very night. That very night, it drives me nuts, people talking about this. Are you going to take a cognitive test? You're driving me nuts. <laughs> Lady, I'm testing myself. Uh, how? Staying up until 2 a.m. <laughs> That's not a cognitive test. Charles Manson pulls all-nighters. They called Trump unfit for staying up until 2 a.m. Now Biden's saying it means you're qualified. <laughs> Biden's trying to do something he's never done before. Win the election without any help. The New York Times says having the media and the intelligentsia turn fully against you is more devastating for a Democratic president because the Democrats generally see themselves as the party that trusts the mainstream press and academic expertise and respectable opinion. Unlike Republicans, the Democrats listen to the elites, take orders from them. Democrats who disobey orders from the elites don't last long. Biden's trying to mimic Trump in 2016, who ran without establishment support. But Joe already needs special shoes, short stairs, and cheat sheets. Do you think he can pull a general election off alone? 
The only reason he's been nominated back to back was because he was the only one who can beat Trump. But that was never true. He only beat Trump with the help of the China virus, the media, Hollywood, and the intelligence agencies. Now he thinks he can win without anybody pulling his strings? Even if he had their help, 72% of the country thinks he's physically or mentally not fit to be president. Peggy Noonan says, the image of a debilitated president has burned its way into the American brain, and there's no erasing it. Doing more unscripted events isn't the answer. Even when I was running for Senate, and each time I ran, quite frankly, not a joke, Philadelphia in particular, got me across the line. Philly got you elected senator in Delaware? Does Biden know Philly doesn't vote in Delaware elections or is he admitting to voter fraud? He can't do unscripted or scripted interviews. He called into Morning Joe and couldn't even read the joke someone wrote for him. He hasn't done a damn thing since the debate. He's been riding around in the golf cart for 10 days or down in Mar-a-Lago talking with his wealthy friend. Biden's so bad that he gets a script and the media gets a script. A Philly radio host admitted the White House sent her a list of questions to ask the president. Were those questions given to you by the White House or did you have, or the campaign, or did you have to submit questions ahead of this interview? The questions were sent to me for approval. I approved of them. Okay, so the White House sent the questions to you ahead of the interview? Yes. Okay. I, I got several questions, eight of them, and the four that were chosen were the ones that I approved. Even when Biden knows the questions, he can't answer. By the way, I'm proud to be, as I said, the first vice president, first black woman, mm -hmm. served with a black president. Identifying as a black female might be Joe's best shot. That host was fired, by the way, for outing the White House. The cover-up continues. But insiders are leaking like crazy. Operation Bubble Wrap Joe is worse than we ever imagined. His staffers say he gets briefed before events on how to walk to the podium, including photos that show a path to the stage with a note that says, walk to podium. They're leaking about Biden's light schedule, saying he's only really with it from 10 to four. And he told a group of Democrat governors that he just needs more sleep. Not something Democrats wanted to hear. Everyone's known Biden's been incapacitated. But as Peggy Noonan says, no one spoke out because no one wanted to be the one who kills the king. This is a party afraid of itself, literally afraid of its own groups and component parts. They're afraid of their own delegates. Party professionals think letting the convention decide would reveal how fatally shattered and divided the party is. How wild it is. But that's how the party looks now, with its leaders in Washington frozen and incapable and no one in charge. Jill and Hunter Biden are in charge. Hunter's been embedded with his dad since the debate, acting as the president's official gatekeeper, the real chief of staff, whispering in Joe's ear that he has to stay in the race. Not only because he needs a pardon, but because the family's broke. And Biden, let's face it, not gonna make millions on the lecture circuit and can't write a book that people will read. So the Biden family's legacy is on the line, politically and financially. They're probably negotiating a golden parachute with power brokers who know all about the Biden family dirt. Here's some money, Joe. Do the right thing, resign with dignity, and we won't hit Hunter with a racketeering charge that can lead straight to the big guy. Dr. Jill, who we wished was a medical doctor, is urging her husband to stay and fight. But the queen of the castle's rattled, watch. Do you have any message to House Democrats who are calling for your husband to drop out of the race? We're dealing with a dysfunctional family that's always put themselves above the country. It's why they sold America out to the Chinese for millions. And now Biden's caught in a Chinese finger trap. The more he pulls, the tighter the elites are going to squeeze him. The final humiliation comes Thursday in front of the world. Where after meeting in Washington with our NATO allies, the president is planning a solo news conference without a teleprompter, hopefully without scripted questions, 
in one of his last chances to negotiate the release of the Democrat Party hostages. Just like Carter, it's another hostage crisis that ends in a landslide. Cognitive test. Cognitive test. Oriented. Oriented. Impairment. Impairment. Gaff. Gaff. Captive. Captive. Gnashing. Gnashing. Utter. Utter. Coo. Coo. Debilitated. Debilitated. Incapacitated. Incapacitated. Delegate. Delegate. Parachute. Parachute. Rattled. Rattled. If you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing to my channel to stay up to date with future videos. Thank you for watching.